click clear inverse and then set inverse. Now the cube follows our wrist. If we want to animate the influence, we can simply add a keyframe here. With Blender, you can also store and load poses. For example, if I wanted to create a fist pose, I'll make the fist pose, and then I'll select all the relevant bones and click on Add to Library here. And enter a name, Fist. To browse through the poses, I hit Ctrl L, and then use either page up, page down, or the mouse wheel. You can symmetrize a pose or a bone by either clicking copy and paste flipped or pressing Ctrl C and Ctrl Shift V. When bones are selected on both sides, it will actually mirror the pose. You can also select an opposite bone in the animation toolbox with this button. Now, if you quickly want to make an OpenGL render or play blast, you need to specify the path where the file should go to. And you can either click on this button here or on this button here. The stamp section lets you add extra information to your render or play blast, such as a frame counter and things like a file name, date or notes. Now before play blasting, we probably want to adjust the cam camera first. Let's choose some angle for, for our camera view, like this. Then we go view, align view, align active camera to view. Now this is what we're going to render. Let's quickly go through the EVO animation toolbox. Um, you can keyframe location, rotation, scaling individually, delete keys for the current frame, toggle this to show only the geometry for play blasting maybe, play blast, reset transforms of the current bone. Here you can uh, set the active action clip, the active keying set, and this one lets you toggle X-ray on and off for the bones. Bone snapping tools. First select the bone to snap and then the target to snap too. Now press one of these buttons depending on whether you want to snap rotation, location or both. It is important to clear the selection first. The safest way to do this is by clicking on deselect all here. You can also bake constraints similarly. Select the bones to bake Press P in the timeline, dope sheet or graph editor to specify the start and end frame. Then click on one of the baking buttons. Note that this button has become gray. This is a feature to let you quickly use an alternate frame range to work with. You can toggle it off again when you're done. There's also a little panel here for creating bone selection sets and recalling them. I find this especially useful when dealing with fingers or bones that are somehow difficult to select. Another nice thing you can do in the timeline is uh, adding markers with the M key. And if you want to name it, press Ctrl M. And then you can drag your markers by left clicking on them. If you want to scale the rig, uh, you have to do this in object mode rather than pose mode, like this. Back to the graph editor. If you want to isolate the display of one or more channels, you need to select them and press V while the cursor is still in the left half explorer region. Use A to clear the selection or select all. Again, with this button only selected bones or objects are shown. To manipulate keyframes, simply click and drag them. You can translate, rotate and scale keys with the GRS keys respectively. I usually activate only selected keyframe handles. With the ghost button to the right, you can create snapshots of curves so you can see and compare your changes with the original previous state. Use the B key if you want to make a rectangular selection. Use Ctrl C and Ctrl V to copy and paste keyframes. Shift D to duplicate a key. Shift T to change the interpolation of a selected key. V to set different handle types for Bezier curve keyframes. You can unhide another property panel here with the N key to add keys numerically or add extra modifiers. Let's add another space and make it a dope sheet. If you are the kind of animator that likes to manipulate keyframes in the timeline, which is not possible in Blender, I recommend to do this in a separate little dope sheet as shown. 
The dope sheet has a very similar functionality set to the graph editor, but visualizes the keys more compact. It is possible to collapse an armature's animation to one line. If the summary button is activated, it even displays all animation inside the scene at once. Control left click selects all keys on one side of the current time. With the E key you can quickly insert empty space. T lets you warp scale the selected keys. Hitting R lets you mark keys as breakdowns or extremes, changing their color. More on the interface. You can create and manage different screen layouts here. Use Ctrl plus the left or right cursor keys to browse through them. You can split and merge regions in the interface by dragging this little triangular handle in the corners. You can swap the region headers between top and bottom with F5. If you accidentally hide the header, simply click on the plus symbol to get it back. You can assign objects to one or more of the 20 layers here by pressing M. You can place your mouse on value fields to copy and paste values with Ctrl C and V. When transforming, right click or escape cancels the action and reverts to the previous state. As a new user I found that confusing but started appreciating it greatly later. You might wonder about the crosshair symbol being constantly visible. This is the 3D cursor. You can position it with the right mouse button and press Shift S to snap things to it. The 3D cursor can also be used as a pivot when transforming. If you want to frame the view to the selected objects, you can press the dot key on the numpad. To playback and stop animation, press Alt A. Press Z to toggle between wireframe and shaded display. Each bone can have a different rotation mode, quaternion or Euler. Rotation mode can also be animated. Now let's have a look at the actual Norman rig itself. The visibility of the FK and IK controls are driven by expressions so that you only see one at a time. You will see a cyclic dependency warning in the terminal. The reason is that expressions on bone visibility is not correctly supported yet, but I assume it will be fixed eventually. As far as I can tell it doesn't do any harm though. To see both controls, activate this. You can snap FK to IK and vice versa with this button. You can unhide extra controls for coping with gimbal lock with this bone layer. This layer contains all deforming bones, so these are well suited to be used as constrained targets. I will now play around with a few settings without further comment. This is all for now. I want to say thank you to Joshua Loing, aka Allegorith, for all his hard work that he has put into the new animation system in Blender 2.5. I hope that everything works as shown without problems and hope you are a happy animator now. Goodbye. <laughs>